Well, hello, everyone. How are we doing? Hope your probably evening is going good and well. <laughs> Thanks for the early hype train. You'll always beat me to the punch. <laughs> Several folks already getting in on the th resubs. Goodness. Mamele, thank you for 13 months. J Mac, you as well. <laughs> 13 months is like more than a year. <laughs> I appreciate how long some folks have been, okay, have been <laughs> committing to the bit <laughs> on that one. Mamele, gifting subs already. I haven't even done anything. <laughs> Thank you, though. It's very generous. Enjoy the emotes. I should get y'all some more emotes to play with. I've been meaning to do that, and I keep getting busy or something. Thanks for the 13 months to you as well, Namtams. <laughs> but yeah, I hope y'all are doing good. So we're probably going to do just like a fairly short-ish stream tonight, just because I'm pretty tired, <laughs> been quite busy, but um, we haven't really done a uh, stream here in at least a couple weeks, feels like. Seemed like we were overdue, and I do kind of need to do this anyway, so what we're going to do today is uh, dip into a bunch of games that came out this year long enough to see if the animation in them is good, and if the animation's good, then we'll keep going for a bit so I can kind of get more of a sense for it. And if not, all right, moving on. Kind of semi-rapid fire. So some of these we may dip out of very quickly. Some of these we may stay in for a while. Who knows? If we find one that's great, maybe we practically spend the whole stream in it. I don't know. But yeah, this is just a... This is a thing that I'm consistently chipping away at in any given year while I'm working on the uh, whatever the next video is. I'm also keeping tabs on releases and trying to uh, investigate the ones that have potential to see what needs to show up in that kind of end of year game animation roundup, right? Uh-oh, Yen, not having a good evening. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> I appreciate that there are those of you <laughs> who will actually be available to join in for a stream at this very weird hour. <laughs> Oof. Sorry to hear about all that again. But... but I hope things improve soon. <laughs> oh, goodness. Y'all are moving so fast. Let me do some quick thanks then. Midnight Skies, thank you for 13 months. And also Landis Maximus. 12 months for Littlest Echidna. <laughs> when did that happen? 
I know, right? It's even 13, technically, and I don't know when it happened either. But thank you as well, Absolute, for 13 months. And I gotta catch up. Y'all are, are like <laughs> coming in faster than I can. Thank you. Valbatross, you've been here for 13 months too. Thank you very much. Didn't stream in a few weeks. It looks like it's resub conga line time. <laughs> yeah. I guess, like, I was... Like, last week was Dan Jones and Dragon, so I was over there instead of doing a stream here. Uh, the week before? I feel like I didn't do anything the week before. And the week before that, I may have done, like, a short stream or... No, maybe that's the, the week that I uh, joined the Dans for EDF over on Dan Jones' channel or something. I feel like I haven't done much here in a few weeks. Am I planning on streaming the new Final Fantasy sequel when it comes out after playing uh, 7? What, uh, wait, hang on. So am I planning on streaming the new Final Fantasy sequel when it comes out after playing 7? Oh, oh, you mean like uh, the new 7 remake game? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, not streaming it. I expect that we will play Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth on Playframe not long after it comes out. I'm actually thinking I might try to squeeze in original Final Fantasy 7 first, like starting in January, maybe do original Final Fantasy VII, because it seems increasingly like maybe the original game and remembering what happened in the original game seems like that might be important, <laughs> given the uh, this quote-unquote remake is playing fast and loose. And who knows where they're going with it. So yeah, maybe we better just scoot through the original first, huh? <laughs> right, I was thinking, folks, though. Game Worm, too. Thank you for the 10 months. Nora Hoodie, thank you for 13 months. Hello, yes, it is a good day. It's, it's kind of pain here. Let's see games. <laughs> Sorry about the pain, but yes, games. For sure. Any interest in new Baldur's Gate? Baldur's Gate's fantastic. It's way, way too big to go on the channel or on stream or anything like that. I mean, unless I just dipped into a random, like, <laughs> hey, I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3 for 15 hours. Let me stream a random hour of it. Okay, bye. <laughs> it's not like any kind of complete thing because it's too big, but it's great. It's fantastic. The rumors are true. Thank you for the 13 months, DS Terrapin. I think I missed 12 months, so I got new Froyo now. <laughs> and leave shortly. Well, thanks for dipping in anyway, and enjoy the new, yeah, sub-badge flavor. Thanks for the 13 months, Artem Matthew, and also Star Tracings, and also Ratstronomer, who says Playframe streams are an event in this household. Oh, well, that's very flattering. <laughs> Hopefully a good event. I assume it must be. If it wasn't a good event, you could just, like, not show up. <laughs> but that is flattering. Thank you. Yeah, maybe we will... <laughs> sure, maybe we'll do a random hour of Baldur's Gate at some point. <laughs> Does it have interesting enough animation to analyze? Kind of. It's... Like, it's interesting in that... In terms of just, like polish and like animated appeal and all that the the animation in Baldur's Gate 3 is very rough like compared to most any other like big AAA release it's not even close like it's very rough around the edges but the sheer quantity is really impressive especially the fact that they have a effectively custom motion captured performance for every single line of conversation for everybody is like, even if it's rough in terms of, like, how cleaned up the mocap is or isn't, it adds a so, to so much to the personality and the expressiveness of that game that it's, a, like, an amazing, like, uh, like, it's, it's a really big add in terms of, uh, the charm and the character in that game, despite it not being polished. And that's really commendable, I think. Have I missed anyone? I think I've caught up. I did. Great. Okay. 
Yeah, I suppose we shouldn't be in starting soon much longer. We should probably play a video game. Let's get one started up, huh? Now loading. Here we go. Do you think doing all those animations mostly in mocap was cheaper than hand doing it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Hand doing it, not possible. <laughs> that The sheer quantity, the hundreds of hours, not just not possible. <laughs> I'm honestly impressed. I until I saw someone who was like working on it confirm it, I would not have believed that they'd actually mocapped all that stuff. Like just because that is a that is a bonkers uh endeavor. That's expensive. Like voice acting is already quite expensive. Voice acting is not cheap. So like any hours you're paying for to have an actor in a booth and like a director in, in the booth and people like managing audio like that that time costs taking on the added expense of like, okay, you're not getting in a booth, you're getting in a suit and we're getting you all calibrated and we're going to be mocap recapturing all of your line reads as you go. So we're also getting your character acting. That's, that's really adding up, like adding way more expense for one already very VO heavy game, but the like payoff for this particular game, enormous. So like, yeah, like it's really commendable. I, I am super impressed. But anyway, that's Baldur's Gate, and this is Octopath Traveler 2. Which I should probably... Here, I should add that to, as the game we're playing to the stream info. Hang on. Should try to update that at least, right? That's game volume. It's looking okay. I think. Hey, thanks for the eight months. Rager Anonymous. And also five months for Drink Jabber. And 13 months for Moon Decay. Goodness, y'all are coming in so quickly. And 13 months for King of Doma. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So, I'm guessing we're not going to spend too long in this one because while these games are very pretty, it's not really the animation in them that is all that impressive. It's just, it's the implementation of the, like, 3D look with the sprites. It's a cool art design sort of uh, approach. The sprite animation is pretty run-of-the-mill standard 16-bit era like character sprite animation, which is good and fine. It's just not like best of 2023 material for me generally, but that's what I thought of the first one. Let's dip into this one a little bit. New game. Does Octopath 2 equal 16 or 64? Honestly, well, like, it it doesn't cleanly adhere to anything, like, <laughs> uh, to any amount of bits. Oh, goodness. No V-Sync option in this one, I don't think. Let me check options again. I'm getting some notable screen tear, which is not great for footage capture. But I don't know if that's a... Oh, wait, there it is. Thank goodness. Okay. The run is saved. No. Hang on. Don't discard the chip. Do the. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Fixed it. Do Agnia? Okay, there seems to be a pretty strong uh, leaning toward Agnia <laughs> as our starting character here. Works for me. Your name is Agnia Bristarni, and you are a dancer. Your tale begins in the verdant region of the Leaflands. Though a tavern dancer in a small get, uh, a tavern dancer in a small village, you have a big dreams for the future. I'm going to become a star and bring smile to people's faces, just like Mama. With hope in your heart and a spring in your step, you begin your journey to stardom. I've got subtitles off, by the way, just for footage capture purposes, so apologies for that. Although I guess a lot of text will probably be on screen anyway. Whatever, we're gonna—we're very possibly going to be dipping out of any one of these games within minutes sometimes. Don't get too invested is what I'm saying. Yeah. 
Yeah, the presentation on this is really cool, though. It's the way the sprites are implemented in 3D space. Really cool aesthetic. Just because the animation itself isn't, like, mind-blowing, game-changing, or something like that. Still a gorgeous-looking game. A totally serviceable, like, uh, Super Nintendo era, uh, or maybe, like, maybe closer to PS1 era. I guess that you're, whoever said 16-bit versus 64-bit earlier, you're kind of right. Like, this is, these are somewhat larger sprites with more detail than you'd probably have seen in 16-bit RPGs. Mostly. It's not like the Super Nintendo couldn't have done these, but, uh, it's a level of detail that's, like, slightly closer to, like, Xenogears era, right? In that kind of, like, middle phase on the PS1 where you still saw lots of sprite-based stuff. With a bit more detail. And it's solid enough, sort of like retro-styled, kind of uh, nostalgic look, sprite animation. But if we're like comparing to other pixel animation games that came out this year, I don't know if this one can quite compete. Those tips won't collect themselves. Yeah, Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, Tactics is another good example of that sort of like PS1 era. Uh, sprite artwork and the, and the design of these kind of evoke that tactics look a bit too actually now that you mention it all right main menu path action confirm slot. okay dashing i love the simplified 3d spaces though like that little that water wheel as a visual element and the little gentle sway on the tree which is a 3d tree but that's got like pixel art style texture on the leaves and stuff like how cool what a great what great like art design <laughs> it's so cool sea of stars does some pretty cool like modern implementation like sea of stars is going more for a straight down the middle kind of like more classically all pixel art sort of look but they're using a lot of modern game engine techniques to punch it up in neat ways that aren't aren't nearly as hard to do now as they would have been back in the day and that's cool And treat a townsperson for their items. Cannot be used on certain individuals if your level's too low. <laughs> Am I just begging for stuff? Isn't this a little too much? Can't explain it, but whenever I see you dance, I feel lighter than air the next day. So I'm more than happy to give you what I can. <laughs> Thank you. I still treasure that autograph you gave me. Well, how much, though? Your dancing was as beautiful as always, Agnia. I'm looking forward to your next show. I think I'll bring my friends next time. Really? 
<laughs> I can't wait to see you then. Thank you so much, everyone. It's us who should be thanking you, Agnea. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Now to clean this place up. Oh, don't worry about that. You must be exhausted. I'm fine. Besides, <laughs> Little Prince, surely you could be looking at one of my games. I guess we did get a new Katamari sort of this year, right? <laughs> Even if it is mostly just a remaster. Say, Agnea, did you manage to get all the leaves you need? <laughs> Almost. Just 1,000 more to go. That's a lot of leaves. Then I'll finally have the 10,000 leaves I need. For why? Ever since we were little, you've been saying that you'd save up and leave the village to become a star. That's right. What's this? It's exactly one thousand leaves for you. I'm assuming leaves are currency, and this isn't just a weird thing between these two. <laughs> but, but, uh, why are you caring me so much? Yeah! Leaves can be exchanged for goods and services. Right out of here. Oh. I know you've been working hard to talk like city folk for when you make it big. You're really something, Eggman. You never gave up on your dream. Consider it my tip. It's my way of cheering you on. You feel imminent disaster. <laughs> you feel disaster in the imminent future. <laughs> it is a very wholesome, happy village setting. You finally did it. The odds are not in their favor. Tomorrow's festival will be my last chance to see you dance. You don't want to miss it. It'll be my best one yet. I'm already looking forward to it. It's dark out. Get home safe, Agnes. Yeah! <laughs> what is this vote going on? <laughs> Yen was left unsupervised, uh, and a vote happened. <laughs> That's okay. We're all tired today. Anyway, I have a radar that I can turn on and off. That's nice. But yeah, look how pretty that is. The use of depth of field to kind of, like, make this look a little bit like a diorama. Yeah, the environment art is just... So cool. I love the look they've designed here. I'll take good care of this. <laughs> People love giving me stuff. Yeah. It's my dancing superpower. I want to see if I can get far enough to see at least, like, kind of a, a battle combat screen stuff. I'm fairly certain this is not going to be in the 2023 video, but we've kind of been just seeing kind of just the main 
narrative scene mode so far, right? Seems only fair to give the game long enough to actually okay. do another thing or two. Dinner's ready. Come and eat while it's hot. Papa, do you remember our promise? You said I could go on my journey if I made 10,000 leaves with my dancing. Well, I did it. So I'm going on my journey. Just like you promised I could. Takes them another 15 to 20 minutes, I think, for you to get to where you can do a bit of combat in her story. Eh. Then go. We'll get there. I'm going to become a star. <laughs> People's faces. <laughs> Such enthusiastic Pichu. <laughs> Pichu. Prepare for what that means. <laughs> I am. Pichu can feel the foreshadowing a mile away. Mama was a star. She wrote her own songs and traveled the land, singing and dancing. Pichu! <laughs> they met when he was making Mama's dresses. Yeah! Mama wore them. <laughs> Her heart out for the world it's like hearing <laughs> some super like being in a theater watching a movie and there's just like some folks a few rows behind you who are just like way too enthusiastic about it <laughs> yelling at the screen mama was so focused on making people smile That she never noticed how ill she was until it was too late. After some time, Mama went on one final journey, and this time to a place we couldn't follow. Ever since then, Papa opposed my dream. My dream of following in Mama's footsteps. Hey, welcome, Zorlock Dark Soul. And thank you for the 13 months. Hope all is well with you as well. Sorry, didn't mean to say as well twice. Mama. Or three times. Thanks, pal. Hey. <laughs> hey, Arda Matthew, thank you very much for the five gifted subs. Very kind and generous. Like Batman. The moon step is a difficult dance. But you can do whatever you set your mind to. Agnea, I want you to have this hairpin. Wear it and you'll feel like you can dance. I do like the amount of like custom sprites and animations they've got for various gestures and little story moments and things like that. The gestures themselves may not be super expressive. They're kind of just functional, but still nice to have them. Anything that anything that keeps it from being a thing where the characters are just kind of standing statically staring at each other constantly. Or using the same three or four gestures or expressions over and over. Time to 
rise and shine. Nothing's gonna stop me today. Boy, I wish I could start a day with that kind of energy. Wake up, Paula. What? What in tarnation? What's the matter, Agni? It's morning. Breakfast time. It'll go cold if you wait too long. Hey, another KT. Thanks for the ten months and for dipping in. <laughs> Hello to you as well. Morning already, huh? So, this is the last time I'll be eating your cooking for a while. I sure am gonna miss getting tasty meals handed to me. From tomorrow on, it'll be your turn. Hmm. I think I'm finally starting to see how amazing you are, Agni. Better late than never, I suppose. So, what are you doing today? Helping out with the festival? I'm going into the woods to gather raspberries. We'll need as many as we can get for the town's famous raspberry pies. I'll be helping it's funny, this is a very, very slow start, but... It's one of the few genres of game where I find that, like, not just acceptable, but sometimes a strength. <laughs> I can't imagine rounding them up will be a problem with your talent. Not that they probably needed this much time to, to settle us in before getting things going, but still. It's actually a loud car outside. Don't know if the mic is getting it, but nostalgic. <laughs> Dominique is here. I gotta make my way over to the festival. To the festival grounds. What a lovely light. Real pretty. It looks like everyone's having a good time. Now for the final preparations. Enjoying the local fall weather? Yes. <laughs> Very much. I was waiting for it. Today, this stage will be all yours. My office gets a lot of midday sun and retains that heat very well, so summer in here was a bit rough. I don't expect I'm ever going to need to turn the heat on in this apartment. Like, well, in the apartment maybe, but not in this room. We have a couple more big pieces so, there. cool time of year. <laughs> Where even, like... Turning off the AC to be able to record things is not pain. Big fan of that. Leave it to me. During the day, Agnea can allure townspeople into following her. Okay. Who wants to come with? Are there specific people or... Oh. Tons of people this way, I guess. Follow me. Watch me shine. <laughs> Shall we? 
said danger level one when I entered the area. Is this a place where, like, encounters can happen? It's kind of seeming like not. Or at least not yet. Do, 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 do. Follow me. Come on now. <laughs> she does have a fun run animation. I like that it's got like it's got some distinct personality to it, and I imagine the other player characters have much the same. I appreciate the help, Agnia. <laughs> Happy to be of service. <laughs> Seems like none of them have an ear for what I have to say. Asking you was the right choice. <laughs> Agnia! Gus, is something the matter? Have you seen Paula? She went raspberry picking in the woods, but she ain't come back yet. What? And that's not even the worst of it. In the forest, I found a door door hoof prints. A what now? Do you remember? That giant boar ravaged a whole village some years ago. It took the whole lot of us to drive him away. He might have caught the scent of the festival foods and scurried over, but... Can't be serious. Will you come with me, Gus? If you say no, I'll just flirt at you. Or whatever my move is. Appeal? Thank you, Gus. But I sure would feel better if we had more company. Not a problem. Then I guess it's time to put my talents to use. Talents? So, I'm very convincing, Gus. Allure, that's the word. Come on now. <laughs> Everyone, I choose you. Congratulations, you lot are going to be my Pokemon. Get on the team, kid. No. Fine. Ah, I see. We've hit max. Fair enough, let's go. Okay. This direction? I don't think this is right. Unless... Ah, here we go. Very pretty. Like, yeah, that light effect... Which is not only impacting the world, but also, like, impacting the sprites and the coloring on the character sprites. Like, that's not a thing older games could have done. But what a neat modern lighting effect. 
to apply. Hey, there's combat. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's do a basic one. Yes, Gus. We're just seeing a few animations, buddy. Summon these some. Summon a person. There we go. Whoa. You're way more effective than I am, even. Gus, do you have skills? Uh, bottle toss. It's on the hat. Dance skills. Gotta see lion dance. Lion dance. <laughs> nice. Yeah, good looking game, but yeah, I don't think this will be I don't think this will be a 2023 animation top pick. Which means it's time to move on. So sit tight. While I queue up another game. Next game. Full Void. Did I update the stream info correctly? I don't think I did. Hang on. Full Void. There we go. So this... This seems like a game, from what I can tell, that's kind of in the, like, out of this world... Uh, oh, what are some other ones? Like that kind of era of side-scrolling adventures, like survival type thing. Ah, I'm trying to think. There's other games like this, and their titles are escaping me. You'll see, I guess, once we get into it. Heart of Darkness and Odd World. Those are two good. Those are two good ones. Good pulls. Yeah, Flashback. There's another one. That's the one I was like. <laughs> it was on the tip of my tongue. Okay. Let's get a look at it. I think this one's a lot quieter. Let me uh, bump volume up a bit. All right, move, action, and jump. More impressive on the pixel animation front. And here we go. Oh no, okay. We should run faster, I think. can jump. But I should most definitely run.
It's definitely much more detailed animation. Hmm. That didn't do anything. What's this now? Oh. Oh, I had to time it right. I see. <laughs> and I died as a result. <laughs> there we go. Spooky. Hmm, I think I need to do something different. <laughs> hmm. Okay. That jump didn't go super well. Though, need having a fully little animated cutscene for all of these uh, failures and whatnot. There's also probably some conventions to, like, the controls of how... Oh, there we go. Of how uh, games like this work that I, as one who has not played a lot of these don't just already have, like, built-in muscle memory for. I like how detailed the animations are. I feel like a lot of them have kind of a similar problem as other kind of rotoscope-looking pixel animation. A lot of other games like this, actually. Uh, like flashback and out of this world and Prince of Persia to an extent like it feels like the spacing on a lot of these animations could really use a little bit more exaggeration come on now hey Will hello Will and friends a long ship approaches hi everyone welcome what have y'all been up to this fine evening oh boy More rain world. Excellent. Eh, come on. Nope. Need to be higher. No, the stream crashed and you're here now. Oh, goodness. My feels in the animation of this title. I love the level of detail. Uh, I'm definitely not 100% sure where I'm supposed to be going, though. I don't think I'm going the right way. And that's not the right way for sure. I love how much animation is in it, and it's a beautiful looking game. I can see this being a contender for kind of 2023 favorites. Even if a lot of the individual animations feel like they've got a little bit of like a floatiness to them, or if like the timing needs to be exaggerated further. I actually like this jump in place where you can't quite reach a thing. This I quite like. This got a nice bit of snappiness to it and weight that not all, all the animations have. Some are better than others. This might be a crate puzzle. I think you're right. There you go. Good thinking, whiskey. <laughs> anyway, hi everyone. I assume I assume most of the folks who watch will like know who I am and vice versa, but hi, I'm Dan. I'm an animator <laughs> who's looking at the animation in games right now. I uh have a channel about game animation called New Frame Plus. 
And I do an annual roundup every year of the uh, games that came out with the uh, best animation in them. And there's a lot of games that came out this year, and I need to skim through a bunch to see how many contenders we got. And this one could be one. Okay, we're going to keep going now. Don't like that. Climb. Okay, what are we doing here? Ooh, moving it. Oh, we're like giving it orders. Neat. Okay, okay. Let's try it again. Down four times. And then stay, maybe? Hmm. Depends on what I need to do with it, I suppose. Yeah, I like the edge lighting on the uh, player sprite as well. Does that update based on the light sources, like, in the direction of them? Oh, it does. Nice. They're doing kind of that same rim lighting effect type thing that they did on the new Streets of Rage from a year or two ago. Looks really nice. Jump. Jump again. Yeah. And then... Yeah. Careful. Oh, no. Can't stay on that for long. Keep jumping. And again. Whee! Like, the vibes are really strong. The pixel art in this is very lovely. It's kind of seeming like it's at least earns a mention. Like, there's some games that I spend a while talking about, and there's some that I sort of, like, say a, a sentence or two about as I go, just because there's so many darn games. <laughs> and a bunch of them that feel like, that's pretty good, that, that deserves a shout-out, even if it's not one that I'm going to spend a long time talking about. This feels like this could be one of those. Is El Paso elsewhere on the list? It Not for today, I haven't grabbed it yet, but... It probably should be. I should look at that one. That's kind of the the uh, an additional side benefit to doing this and checking so many games out. Sometimes even the ones that don't have great animation in them just end up being really fun games or great for uh, like a playframe one-off. Ah, it's a skeleton dog. Let's leave. I'm leaving. See ya, sucker. Learn to swim, idiot. Ah, oh, jeez. It's using the sewers. I should go. Not staying anywhere near that. Oh, I have no choice, do I? Fine, we're going down into the sewers where the dog lives. Come on. Yeah, I do like all these little cutscene things here. It does add a lot. No swimming for us, I guess. Uh-oh. Well, maybe we'll go that way. The The fact that, like, yeah, there's lots of unfair deaths that happen as you go, but, like, the trial and error-ness of it is kind of fun. And just like, all right, oops, nope, not that way. <laughs> oh, that's how we can, okay, that's how we can go different places, cool. <laughs> he 
even though some of them <laughs> seemed like a little out of nowhere. And also, it feels like we needed a, a connected dot between, oh, I slipped and I fell into a thing. Like, we need a, a, a middle shot there where you splash into the water and then drown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't you hate it when you step on a banana peel and drown instantly? Me too. Do we have any options here, or am I now just going to have to, uh... Oh, wait, I can jump. Okay, cool. <laughs> that's a very fun... That's a bit of a silly hazard to have. <laughs> Is there a way to safely bypass? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Alright. We got enough of this one. I, I can see this one getting shown up in the video. We'll see. It's always hard to decide until I'm getting down to just actually finishing writing the video and recording it. Because at that point I see how many games there are and like how dense it's getting. And sometimes there's a game that seems like, okay, yeah, this one will show up in the video. And then I like start looking at footage of it compared to the other contenders in the same category, and it's like, okay, this doesn't actually look as impressive anymore compared to some of these others. But yeah, definitely agreed, King Carnage. Not a, not a safe sewer. Not up to code. I see a lot of violations happening here. <laughs> but okay. Next game. Hang on. Sit tight, everyone. And I will hydrate and stretch like folks asked me to like 20, 30 minutes ago. Oh, this one's louder. Gunbrella. Welcome to Gunbrella. I don't know much about it either. If I'm looking for a well-animated game, I'd recommend Anton Blast. Not out yet, but there's some demos. I'll wait until it's out, because, uh, like, at this point, it's possible that it might not be out this year. <laughs> and if it's not out this year, then it's uh, not one that is a contender for the video. But I do want to, like, I'll, hang on, let me write that title in a tab, or like a browser tab real quick, so that I can check it out later and add it to my, like, keep an eye on it list. Oh, yeah, that does look really cool. Taking a glance at that later. But yeah, welcome to uh, Gunbrella, though. Let me uh, change the stream title real fast. Well, not the title, but category, you know. I think this is a Metroidvania. I think. You know, we'll find out. Begin. Um, let's, let's say normal, please. How's animation treating us? Pretty good. It's been all pixel, uh, <laughs> all pixels so far. But some of them have been very good. Oh, uh, GD Warble, uh, mentioning Ghost Trick in the remaster. Yeah, I probably wouldn't consider that one a candidate for uh, 2023, like, game animation of the year just because it is a remaster of an existing game, but it is a game I do need to actually check out, though. Never played much Ghost Trick, but I am pretty sure it's one that I would quite like. And the animation is great fun. Yeah, Hi-Fi Rush is a pretty, like... Pretty much has a guaranteed spot in that video. <laughs> no question.
It's really solid looking. Nice art style. I, I'm not used to seeing kind of like a uh, film grain effect on pixel art game. It's a cool like look though. Don't know how well it comes through on stream, but. Gives it a neat texture. Something about the character design of this is reminding me of Lisa, I think. I think that's what's... It's calling to mind. Just the character designs, I guess. I really like the light animation on the text box. It's a nice touch. Feels really slick and polished. Was Potionomics this year? Nope, that was last year. And it definitely made it in the last year's video, too, because great animation in that game. Tell me of the Gumbrella. All right, I'm not going to ask you about everything. Or, unless I am. I might be asking you about, it, about everything. Well, I must be going too. I do like our run, actually. I like that the hat kind of pops off our head a little bit in a sort of overlap effect. It's really nice, polished-looking motion on this, like, on all the text boxes and UI and stuff as it pops in. It's real nice. The cape kind of following us procedurally. Yeah, it's a really nice run. Press A to jump. Jump and hold against the wall to cling. Press A again to wall jump. Okay. Motion feels good. Press right bumper to open the gumbrella. While aiming... Uh, open while aiming with left uh, stick to perform dashes. Keep the gumbrella open while aimed upward to glide through the air. What now? So... Interesting. And kind of dash with it. And, oh, wow, that's neat. What an interesting method of traversal. That's interesting. It's going to, like, take a little getting used to, but cool, though. Press X or right trigger to shoot. Hold right stick to stabilize precision aiming. All right, let's, uh, whoop. Whee! Hello. This is feeling very Devolver. Oh, no. Probably don't want to be in there. No, no. Up. Oh, I, wait, I can keep doing that? Oh, you can only do it twice. Okay. Oh. Oh. Hang on. I can jump and then I can use my little boost. Cool. Okay, let's... Hang on. Oh. Yeah. That's interesting. In water, tap A while holding the swim. Okay. Perform an umbrella dash uh, to move more quickly. What a neat little mode of traversal. 
inventive. Cycle through consumables. Consume item with left bumper. The truth about consumables. <laughs> nice. Okay. We got benches. Open the umbrella to block. Okay. Block immediately before contact to reflect bullets. This is a game that's going to get very hard. I expect further in. It feels really like cool and interesting though. I can see it feeling very satisfying to play well. If you're reading this, then that means you got stuck. Try pressing A while holding down. <laughs> I'm used to a lot of games feeling the need to teach me the hold down and hit A to go through the floor. Actually having like a full extended little longer read of like, hey, you probably got stuck like me. <laughs> Let me tell you about this neat trick. It's pretty funny. Ow. Ow. Very grindhouse. Ooh, this is interesting. So I'm low health, and I'm sort of like limping around now. Slower. Slower and sort of like a more sporadic kind of bursting move forward. That's kind of nice. Like, not for me, obviously, but... <laughs> Gumbrella also works on zip lines. Love the sound of that. Let's, uh, real quick... Eat. Use bandage. There we go. Okay. Yeah! <laughs> okay, this game kind of rules. <laughs> it is extremely Devolver. That is... I agree. <laughs> but, uh... Very clever so far, though. Yellow. Ah, you sell apples. I have just enough for one apple. I'll take it. Okay, bye. <laughs> Hollow point. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. <laughs> Y'all coughing in there because you want me to go in there? I'm exploring. Maybe. Unless they say to stop. <laughs> they got me with the same joke again, but I still like it. Like, this could show up as a mention? I feel like I want to see more enemies, or if there's, like, a boss enemy. That kind of feels like that. Sometimes with pixel art games like this, 
the boss enemy is where you're really like see like is where it really can potentially bump things up to the next level right Sometimes a game will be looking like, yeah, it's pretty good. And then it'll throw a boss at you. It's like, whoa, that looks amazing. <laughs> Bonch with my umbrella, frog. Ow. Get out of here. I got a rat. What? Why do I have a rat? Oh. Hey, rat. Are you stuck in the box? Well, you're welcome. I got another rat. Heck, I could see this being just a good random one off on play frame, too. Yeah, Sea of Stars does have some really nice uh, boss stuff. That guy coughing in there makes me think that he uh, wants my attention. <laughs> yeah, I don't love everything about the animation in Sea of Stars. And I want to... Like, I tried putting in a few hours. Uh, and the play of it is great. I wish the story was more interesting. Because I don't know if I want to stick if the play is good enough that i'd want to actually stick it out to keep playing it if the story was actually hooking me then i would be adoring that game oh he just wants to give you some advice all right well this is enough of a sample of this one i feel like to start from unless something interesting is about to happen Tell me of fishing. Can I leave? Interesting. Like, it's Metroidvania, but it's got more kind of RPG, like, interact with characters and talk and, like, <laughs> not adventure game quite. Like, you're not puzzle solving necessarily, but you're, like, going and talking to people a lot more. Interesting mix. <laughs> I do love the hat coming off the head with the jump, too. It's very nice. All right, well, let's dip into another one. I may have to play this one a bit more on my time, though. Get further in. Because I'm kind of on the fence here. I do like it. Can't tell if it's video-worthy, but I like it. And it's fun to play. But it's time for another, I think. Sit tight. All right, we're in. Welcome to Mr. Sun's hat box. I don't know either. 
I also don't know why every single game has been a pixel one. Next game, I'll... <laughs> After this one, we'll do something that's not a pixel one. <laughs> Didn't realize how many pixel ones were in this list. It's kind of back to back. Hello. Delivery for Mr. Sun. Okay, be right there. Please sign here. Thank you. Have a nice day. Drop the package. <laughs> oh no. We've been robbed. Don't worry, sir. We'll retrieve your package. Oh, no worry. Gotta run. They're getting away. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm liking the absurdity already. All right. Find the door and exit the current floor. All right. Oh, there they go. Get behind the guard to sneak past. Go here to get the drop on the guard. <laughs> right trigger to kill the guard. <laughs> Try practicing on another neck. Okay. We take hats very seriously around here. Jump onto hats to knock them off. Ooh. X to equip hat. Oh. Eh. Hard hat. <laughs> Press B to D hat. I've got a hard hat now. Seems like this might be a little loud. Hang on, let me bump it down just a... There we go. Okay. Open chests. A pistol. Steal my hat, will you? Or, no, my customer's hat, rather. You know. Right bumper to throw your weapon at the guard. <laughs> Capture the guard. <laughs> Capture the gun. Animation's nothing to write home about, but, uh... I'm beginning to suspect this game might be awesome. Survived! Our loot? One guard, one gun, one hat. Oh, I should go update the stream info. Dang it. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Sun. I'm sorry to report I wasn't able to retrieve your package by myself. Oh, that's okay. I, But fear not. Since you signed up for our delivery guarantee insurance policy, we won't relent until that package is in your hands. Oh, it's not that big a deal. You own the land under your shop, correct? We shall set up a base of operations there as we continue our search. Um, I'm not sure if... At no extra cost, of course. Thank you for your patience. Welcome to your base of operations. Okay, this game rules. <laughs> Open the build menu. Sure. To get started, you'll need two more rooms. Staff room and storage. <laughs> uh. All right. Storage room. Put it right here. Perfect. We do also need a staff room, though. Wait, we have that already. Never mind. Well, no, this is slightly different. Staff room. Bam. Select the mis missions panel to send your units out. <laughs> to do what? From here, you can scan for missions. Scanning. Each day, you'll have a choice of three missions. 
neutralize, kidnap, kidnap. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Who cares about animation anymore? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> uh, let's kidnap this one. Choose a unit to take on the mission. If you fail the mission, the unit will be lost permanently. Ooh. We're building a whole <laughs> outer heaven. Is this XCOM? Kind of. It's like somewhere between XCOM and Metal Gear. <laughs> Alright, Existential Foreman. Some of those stats look like they're probably bad, but um, that's fine. Equip your unit for the mission here. Pay close attention to your unit's quirks that can drastically affect your playstyle. Hold left trigger to see more details. So, okay. Guilty conscience. Panics for a short time after snapping someone's neck. Hampered when holding heavy things. Jumping on enemies doesn't stun them. Well, that's pretty bad. Night vision, though. <laughs> Got a kidnapped strong arm Webster here. All right. Oh, you can play co-op as well. Probably better bring the pistol, given I can't jump on people. <laughs> well, good news. I have found uh, a game of the year contender. <laughs> find and kidnap strong arm Webster. Your goal is to find your target and capture them. Boy, they got guns. I think I'm going to have to sneak here. Careful. Climb. We'll be in stealthy. Kidnap. Okay. Now, how to incapacitate you is the thing. Oh, I guess I can throw the gun, huh? Eh. That did not work like I quite thought I was going to work. Ah! Chaos! Chaos! Chaos is happening. Give me my hat. Where's my gun? Ow. Alas, rest in peace, existential foreman. <laughs> Killed by dictionary, Albert. Oh my goodness. We found a good game, everyone. While I was gone, not much happened. The med bay and the brig are now available to build. Open the build menu to see details. Heal damage staff here. Convert captured enemies to staff here. Kind of need some of those first, huh? We got just enough money for each of these. Let's see. Medical. Brig. Brainwash flute tanner? Sure. Oh, can't afford to do it. Too poor. <laughs> Let's try another mission. Complete these story missions to progress in the game. Ooh. Gonna neutralize that target. Or raid this target? What does raid mean? Eliminate all enemies. Oh, wow. Hmm. Let's try a raid, sure. And let's take someone maybe more equipped. Shooting guns uses up one additional ammo. Can't keep a hold on melee weapons while attacking. Seems bad. Lightweight did not help me last time. Gets hurt from things that would normally stun you. Can only aim directly forward. Boy, this is not a good initial crew. <laughs> Loud footsteps, breathing in smoke hurts over time. Swinging blunt melee objects deals damage instead of stunning. You know what? Empath Connor may be just the person for this job. I lack hats and weapons, though, so... Weapons are going to be on-site procurement, I guess. 
begin. Gonna need a melee weapon though, like this desk. Oh geez. Ah. Yeah, I'm panicking, I'm panicking, I'm panicking, I'm panicking. Now I have an ax though. Eh. <laughs> and a gun, and I'm nearly dead. Eh, no ammo. <laughs> that didn't go quite as I'd hoped. And we were killed by preload Kemp. <laughs> uh, okay. This game's great. Highly recommend. It's... I can't remember how exactly, like, how much this one cost. I think it's like five bucks, though. <laughs> I recommend picking this up, though, because this is great. <laughs> this could be great in co-op. Wow, yeah. This is very good. Do recommend. Um, not really helpful on the animation front, though. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see what we can do elsewise on that front. Um... Something that's not pixel art. Oh, this is 2D. This will work. Okay, we're back. Welcome to Return to Monkey Island. Changing the stream info. There we go. Okay. All right. I know the art for this looks good. I'm excited to see it in motion. Let's check the scrapbook. Hey, want to see my mighty pirate scrapbook? It's filled with my adventures. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a mighty pirate. That's me, Guybrush Streetboy. In the old days, you became a pirate by completing three trials to prove your worth. Treasure hunting is important for any pirate. The pirate leaders were in charge of the three trials, acting as judge, jury, executioner, and devoted grog tasters. The test of thievery involved breaking into the governor's mansion. Oh, is this very quiet? Here, let me crank it up. All these games are at wildly different volume levels by default, so... <laughs> just, yeah, just let me know if the uh, game audio is too loud or quiet, uh, quiet when we start a new one, and I'll keep tweaking it. This is when I met Elaine, the love of my life. She was governor at the time. Mastering sword fighting was more a matter of wits than agility. Things took an unexpected turn while I was working on the three trials. Monkey Island was a steaming volcanic mystery, covered with jungle and not found on any map. All right, this is very good, but this is not helping with the animation side. Let's dive in. New game. Uh, casual mode, please. Anything. Just put my leg back on. Hey, you kids. You're not supposed to be in here. <laughs> <laughs> this is charming What's looking. Next? Let's goof on those two. Pretend they're our parents. <laughs> yeah. Sorry we ran off. You were probably worried about murderers and ne'er do wells. Don't worry. <laughs> I found them. <laughs> um, come on, let's go. Let's pretend I have powers that make lightning come out of my eyes. It's so lifelike. 
wonder if it's real. I like how different everybody's walks feel. Sorry, boys. Could you stop following us? It's creepy. Yes, yes sir. Come on. I saw a scurvy dog shack back there. Scurvy dogs. I've never had one of those. No way. You have to try one. It's the best thing you'll ever eat in your life. No bullet. Wow. Walk to Chucky by turning towards him and pressing A. What should we do next? We gotta get to scurvy dogs. I, I can't believe you never had one. In we go. Hello. Use the bumpers or the right stick to cycle through the different objects around you. It says, return outhouse key when finished, or else. That's a good way to handle this sort of game using a gamepad. Just cycle through the points of interest. I once got a scurvy dog that was bigger than my head. Looks like they need a swabby in here. I'll never be the ship swabby. That is really, really low. You kids better have money. Uh, yeah, we've got all kinds of money. Use the left stick to press and press A to select a response. Um, can we get a couple scurvy dogs? Can we get a couple scurvy dogs? Sure. If you give me a piece of eight, that's money that grown-ups use. I know what a piece of eight is. Good for you. You can have a couple of dogs if you give me one. Um, please? Please? Can't you spare something for a couple of hungry kids? Listen up, you little moocher. Let me tell you something. I don't like kids. I'm an honest businessman trying to make an honest living. I don't need 50 kids a day coming in and wasting my time trying to get me to give them free food. Well, never mind. I guess never mind. Hey, I know. Let's look for change in the outhouse across the way. Coins fall out of people's pockets when they sit down in there. <laughs> Chucky has good ideas. What should we do next? Let's look for change in the outhouse. Maybe we can find enough to get scurvy dogs. All right, let's go. It's locked. Maybe oh dear. One of the shops has a key. Some places you go have scurvy dogs with cheese inside. Where'd the key go? Oh, there it is. Yeah, here it is. Yes, give. They put it on a leg to keep you from walking off with it. <laughs> I'll bring Mine. this right back, sir. You'd be wise to do that. I got the leg from the last kid who didn't bring back the key. Inventory? Very nice. Open my to-do list. Buy scurvy dogs. Find coin. Find key. <laughs> it's really cute. I like the sort of like bouncy wobbliness on characters when they talk, or at least this character in particular. They're getting some nice charm out of the, just the very simple motion. I've got the key in my pocket. Sure do. Apply key. Good. You unlocked it. Coins. What's this? It isn't a piece of eight, but it's a round piece of metal about the same size and shape as a piece of eight. That's called a slug. It's like a fake coin. Think about the slug. I thought it was a piece of eight at first. It looks just like a piece of eight. Well, we better take it. A fake coin is almost as good as a real coin. Almost. I once had the hiccups for four days straight. Search for coins. I don't see any coins, and I'm not putting my hands in that. Okay. Please wash hands before leaving outhouse. Chucky, why don't you look in the toilet? No way. You do it. Okay. <laughs> no coins. Gross. 
Well, I think we've got something that'll almost work, like for a coin. Just gotta get it painted or something. Chucky, do you want to be tied up? Hey, uh, Chucky, stand over here for a minute. Nah, I want to get scurvy dogs. Fair enough. Oh. Did you know you can keep a scurvy dog warm by sticking it in your armpit? You really got a one-track mind, Chucky. Let's not go back there again. We'll just get yelled at. Yeah, let's get scurvy dogs instead. I'm uh -huh. doing it, Chucky. I've got to find a way to hey, Chuck, make fake money. Get ready to run. I guess they don't like visitors. Let's go next door and get scurvy dogs. I have this thing that looks like money. You want it? Oh, here. I'll That's put this back. The outhouse key was. In France, they could... Hey, look! I'm returning the key! You want a medal? Could I exchange that for a hot dog? Check this out. What can we get with this? Tastes like a piece of eight. Enough for a couple of scurvy dogs if you want. Perfect. Perfect. Take them, boy. What are you getting? What? Just kidding. Here's yours. I'm having these for breakfast, lunch, and dinner forever. What do you want to do now? I don't know. What do you want to do? No good ideas, Chucky? Come on. You have so many. I wonder where those two people we were following went. Oh, yeah. What's that up there? Wakey, wakey, Mr. Pirate. Um... Hello? Boo! Ah, he's dead to the world. Oh, did I not update it yet, Ashton? <laughs> oh, sure, if you want to. Thanks for the reminder. I thought I had... Too distracted by how Please amusing Mr. Sun's hat box was. Hands. That's my friend D. Hey D. Hey Chucky. What are you jerk faces up to? We just got here. I'm making a list of stuff to do. Give me that. I'm an expert planner. There. Perfect. See you around the park, shitheads. Okay, to do. Oh goodness, that's a lot of stuff. Check out the anchor. Beat Chucky in a race. Feed the duck. Add some sauce to my scurvy dog. Practice sword fighting. Find a four-leaf clover. Make a wish at the wishing well. Find our real parents. <laughs> what a checklist you've given me. <sighs> that just shows how little you know about anchors. This one's not a very good example. You'd know that if you read as much about anchors as I have. Did you know that anchors originally weren't designed to hold ships in place? They were used in combat. <laughs> shot from cannons as a grapple when you were trying to board another ship. They started making them bigger and bigger because they would do more damage that way. Then people noticed what happened when you missed the other ship <laughs> and hit the sea button uh. instead. The current bow-shaped design is actually less effective than the sharper V-shaped design that was popular last Is this the same voice actor who does Lily in Psychonauts? The design went out of fashion after sailors started to think the letter V... Might not be, it's just got a similar quality. You can still find the old kind around sometimes, but collectors have grabbed most of them. On a modern anchor, if you look close, you can tell that one side is a little larger than the other. That's to prevent what's called plummeting, where the anchor goes down <laughs> too evenly, and then it doesn't catch well on the bottom. The little flanges at the tips are at different angles. How much do you think they wrote for this? Way down for the same reason. Most anchors these days are made of iron, and you have to recast them like twice a year because they rust. About 30 years ago, somebody thought of a way to get around that by making them out of wood instead. <laughs> All kinds of people invested a lot of money in these wooden anchor companies. But the only way they could keep them from floating was to catch another <laughs> It is anchor. extremely like the Psychonauts' dog-watching walking speech. The, old way. the 
word anchor comes from the Sanskrit word Nagara, meaning city. <laughs> They're called that because when you stop in the middle of the ocean, it's like you've made port at an invisible city. Yeah, I'm kind of an expert on anchors. I read a lot. <laughs> <laughs> If you missed anything, you can press left on the D-pad to see previous lines. That's good to know. It's really charming. I, I don't know if the animation is quite, like, best of level, but it is working very effectively for this game, though. Hey, Chucky. Want to race? You're on. I'll officiate. Three. Different voice actors? Not Lily? Okay. Oh, no. Did I actually beat you in that race? It was pretty close. I, I did. Just barely. Wow. Are there subtitles for the dialogue in the game? There might be. Uh, I've got them turned off now for footage reasons. So sorry. I know that makes it a little bit harder to follow along for some folks. Apologies for that. I wonder what's in that basket. Let's find out. What do you think you're doing? Kids these days. No regard for personal property. And no respect for your elders. I have half them. Gotta run! How rude. I have taken your bread. And I'm distributing it to the masses. Give it some of your bread. Did you know your feet won't smell if you don't wash them? What? I'm feeding a duck bread. Let's see. Bread. If you see a red circle when hovering over the object, that means the interaction's invalid. Oh. Hmm, hang on. Examine bread. I stole it from that couple. Oh, I have to drop it on the duck. Okay. Oh, is the game audio being picked up by the auto captions as well? Here, I, I can turn it down on my the audio down on my end so it doesn't do that. There we go. Sorry, that would make it more confusing, huh? <laughs> uh. What's this red glob on the ground? That's ketchup. It's supposed to be really good with scurvy dogs. Well, mine now. You should put that on your scurvy dog. I definitely shouldn't, but the game disagrees. And game's the boss. We've made a food mistake. I think that was ketchup. Whoops. Did you know your feet won't smell if you don't wash them? Excuse me, Chucky. I'm trying to... There. I found a four-leaf clover. Awesome. There was still one left. Darn. What remains on our list? Practice sword fighting and make a wish at the wishing well. Okay. to beat me. No way. You'll never catch up to my level. I win. I win. Uh -uh. <laughs> you guys are both pretty weak. Well, anyway, that was fun. This is very cute. Where was that wishing well? I think I ran past it. At home, I've got a collection of old scurvy dog sticks that fills a whole shoebox. Or I haven't found it yet. Might be further. Far right? Okay. Oh, there you are. Oh, hey. No, not the gate. Are we done here? We might not be able to come back coin. if we head this way. I should throw my coin in and make a wish. Before you use up your wish, maybe you should save the game so you can load your save game and try another wish. <laughs> okay. Good tip, game. 
I wish Chucky had a mustache. I wish D would disappear. I wish for a cool plant. I wish for another scurvy dog. I wish we could speak backwards. I wish we could speak backwards. <laughs> They're getting a lot of character, like... That was fun. Aw, oh, man. It wore off. Too bad. You made more sense than usual. You can load your save game from the option screen. <laughs> but why would I? I made the perfect wish already. Oh. Hello. Hey, Dad. Hello, Mr. Threepwood. Hey, kids. Having fun? Yeah. We got scurvy dogs. Those have toenails and stuff in them. Ugh, I read about it. And we were playing your adventures. We just did Big Whoop. Big Whoop. Oh, boy. That takes me back. I like it when Chucky asked me to put his leg back on. He says it really funny. You guys always make up the craziest stuff for the ending of that story. It's fun. But you can't just change it around. That's not how storytelling works. A lot of your stories don't feel like they're finished at the end. What do you mean? Well, like, there's this one that you call The Secret of Monkey Island, where you went to Monkey Island and fought LeChuck. Oh, that story has a great ending. There's punching and fireworks. I thought you liked that one. But you never did find the secret. Not the real one. Sure, but that's not what that story was about. Kids, let me tell you a story that is about finding the secret of Monkey Island. Is this a long story? I think maybe I gotta go use the bathroom or something. Yeah, I have to go um, walk my tarantula. Maybe I should go with them. No, no, stick around. This is a good one. See, there was a rumor going around that my old nemesis, LeChuck, had somehow discovered the exact location of the secret of Monkey Island. I knew I had to get it before he did, so I went to Melee to get my own expedition started and beat him to the punch. This is super cute. Deep in the Caribbean, the island of Melee. Like, I didn't grow up playing Monkey Island games, and this, even I feel nostalgic <laughs> playing this opening bit. Is it a remake or a sequel? Uh, this should be a sequel, I believe. Apparently a really good one, too. Again, I, I don't have much history with the uh, originals, but... It sounded like when this came out, folks were enjoyed it quite a lot. <laughs> Loving all the little dancing... Are those totodiles or just dinosaurs? In either case, I like them. to be back on Melee Island, the hub of pirating in the Caribbean, where every good expedition begins. I'll see some old pals and get things rolling. Or sailing in this case. Hi, I'm Guybrush Threepwood. Remember me? Haven't seen you in a while, Threepwood. What have you been up to? Oh, you know, freebooting mostly, swashing buckles and so on. But now I'm getting an expedition together to find the secret of Monkey Island. Oh, you're sailing with LeChuck. What? LeChuck's here in Melee? Is there widespread panic? Are people evacuating? Ah, he doesn't seem interested in carnage. That is Rob Paulson, isn't it? <laughs> just, just here taking on supplies and crew, as far as I can tell. Well, anyway, no. I'm what a not treasure. dealing with LeChuck. You know my history with him. I feel like this might all be true. 
Kidnapped my wife. He's an evil zombie ghost pirate terror of the seas. We've been enemies for my whole career. That guy steals all my best ideas. I'm mounting my own voyage. Mine. How many of these can we pick? LeChuck kidnapped my wife. He's always had designs on her. I sailed to Monkey Island to find them and get her back. Oh, I thought you weren't married yet when that happened. And didn't she more or less rescue herself? That's not the point. That guy steals all my best ideas. That guy steals all my best ideas. Are you sure it isn't the other way around? Seems like he was here first. I don't know how he found out, but I'm sure he's just doing this to get one up on me. I'm mounting my own voyage. Mine. Well, you'd better get cracking then. The Chuck's loading up on the outer dock as we speak. Well, I'm gonna hire a ship and a crew and beat him to the punch. Just as soon as I can get someone to back the venture. I'm a little short on funds at the moment. In that case, you'll want to go talk to the pirate leaders at the Scum Bar. Exactly. That's why I came to Melee. It'll be great to see those old guys again. We'll knock back a grog and hash out the details. Scum Bar. Hydrating, that's a good idea. Long table in the back. I know where I'm going. We'll see. Especially since we're going to a bar. Probably won't do tons more of this one for now. I don't know if this one is quite a animation of the year contender, but it like it's really effective for what it is though. I could see it being one of the games that I include some footage of even if I don't directly mention it. That's like, that's, those are kind of the tiers, right? There's the games that I spend a good while of those videos talking about the animation in, the real like stars of the year. There's the games which I say a few sentences about in passing, ones that I might drop like one sentence on, and then just a few others that I just wanted to squeeze in, even though I don't really have anything to say about them. Yeah, kind of like a B-roll level thing, which like, there's no shame in that whatsoever. Like. Oftentimes those are in there because I think their animation is also very good, just maybe not quite to the same level as the competition. Or I just adore the game. Like, I don't know if Little Gator Game has the best animation of 2022, but darn it. That game is showing up in that video somewhere because I love it. <laughs> I'm here to talk to the pirate leaders about a new expedition. Honorable mention is a good way to put it, yeah. Ooh, a trivia book. It's a book for storing collectible trivia cards. Looks like someone just left it here unattended. Yar. Hello. Have you seen the pirate leaders around? This is their table. In fact, you'd probably better move. You don't want to get caught sitting here. It's our table, Rummy. We're the pirate leaders. Get lost. So much character. I hadn't heard there was a change of leadership. Oh, no. Did nobody remember to notify you? Maybe your party invite got lost in the mail. Where are the three older guys who used to hold court here? Who cares? Probably crying in an alley somewhere wishing they were still relevant. Making up trials for each other and writing memoirs that no one will read. There's a lot of good character on even just these three. I'm impressed that within this very simple style, they are actually managing to get kind of distinct motion and personality just out of how each character moves and the things that they are kind of like doing while they're just sitting around. Like two of them are sitting there just kind of looking at me. One of them is <laughs> just scratching the table for no good reason. But when they talk, they still seem to have like just kind of different vibes about them. It's impressive, it's pretty good. Is it you I should talk to about financing an expedition? An expedition? Who is it that you think you are, exactly? Um. I'm Guybrush Threepwood. Probably you've heard of me. Probably not. Permission to slaughter the annoying old wastrel man, Captain Madison? Wait, it was Captain Madison? She's, like, famous! I've got her on a trading card. Her plunder stats are amazing! Plunder stats aren't everything. Then the others were Captain Lila and Captain Trent? It was Lila who threatened to kill you? Look, they weren't that great, okay? Listen to the story. Want me to slaughter him? Don't bother. He's just a harmless hack who thinks he has a good idea for a pirate raid. 
I'm going to find the secret of Monkey Island. I'm going to find the secret of Monkey Island. You're wasting our time. The secret? I didn't think that was even a real thing. It's a personal passion of mine. It's a personal passion of mine. I really want to find it. Your weird fetishes are not something I need to hear about. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm sensing some reluctance, but hear me out. I could make it worth your while if you help me hire a crew. I could make it worth your while to help me hire a crew. The percentage of their earnings or something? No one in here wants to chase your pipe dream. With backing, I can work it out. It's a surefire investment. Triple your money or your money back. Not interested. If you don't take this opportunity, LeChuck will grab it. LeChuck? Yes. The dreaded zombie ghost pirate LeChuck himself is also going after the secret. He's here in Melee getting ready right now. If that doesn't prove it's a worthwhile venture, I don't know what else to tell you. Great. Problem solved. Excellent. You'll do it. <laughs> no, of course not. Why waste money on an expedition when you can just join the one that's already going? Have fun with your scary ghost friend. Bye-bye. Well, the slight problem with that idea is that LeChuck and I are basically mortal enemies. <laughs> Fine. I'll uh, give you owe your money. I can do this on my own. If I can't buy a ship, I'll steal one. I'm a pirate. I'll find a way to get to Monkey Island no matter what it takes. Uh, I like the old pirate leaders better. This is really charming, though. Okay. Let's look at one or two more. Hang on. Let's switch real quick. What to do next? What to do next? What to look at? Hmm. Yeah, I really like this new BRB screen as well. It's art from my friend Lillian Chan. She's great. And yeah, she has snuck so many play for Amy references in, into that single piece of art. Hmm. I looked at Lies of P already. I looked at Sea of Stars already. Oh, here we go. Is Bramble the Mountain King on my radar? I looked at that one as well. The like, the animation that I saw in the first half hour or so didn't impress me. It seemed like the game was pretty neat, and I heard like like I heard from others, Will included, that the game was pretty neat. But uh, the animation wasn't really grabbing me. At least in the parts I saw. 
usually I can tell within, like, it's all about the finale. I see. Okay. That's, that's the thing. Like, usually I can tell within about five minutes or so if a game is going to, like, if a game's animation is going to impress me, just because usually most games do put, like, try to wow you in those early minutes. Uh, so they're often putting one of their best feet forward. Not always, but often. Have I seen the pupil of Master, the one about Monet? I haven't. No, or Master's pupil. Uh. Lamplighters League. Yeah, that's another one I do need to look at. I haven't grabbed it yet, though. Same for Shadow Gambit. Apparently that one's really fun. There's definitely a lot of games I still need to look at, but I haven't either got a hold of them or <laughs> just don't have them installed right now. Yeah, like I've not heard anyone say a bad thing about Shadow Gambit. Apparently, like the only bad thing about it is that it's just the last one that studio is making. Which, bummer, but I get it. Yeah, there's a... You know what? Disgaea 7 did just come out. While I'm about to play this next one, I let me get Disgaea 7 installing. I don't expect... Like, the animation of Disgaea has kind of been in one place for a long time. And I like Disgaea, but it's not like... They're not games with animation that... Is... Like, ultra impressive. It's just really good at what it does. And they're fun to play. I'm curious to see how they made a bipedal dog in Pikmin 4 look not weird. We could do some more Pikmin 4, honestly. I feel like I still need to see some more of that one to judge its animation, too. Maybe that's what we'll do. Like, that'll be the, the last three. The one I've almost got queued up here. <laughs> Disgaea, and then Pikmin. And we'll uh, see a little bit more of that. It sounded like from everything I've been hearing from other Dans and other people who've enjoyed Pikmin 4, that I've really only seen the worst of Pikmin 4 so far. <laughs> Which is just its very slow start. <laughs> Disguise 6 at Hollow Live DLC. That's great. And believable. That seems like a that seems like a brand overlap that makes a lot of sense actually. Sit tight. Sorry. Sorry for the long delay on this one. That's okay. We might need a minute to figure out how to assess the animation on this one. And here we go. Yep, yep, yep. Darkest Dungeon's about making the most of a bad situation. Boy, it is. Hang on, changing the category. Boom, all right. Let's get a look. No, the, the, this, this one. The house on the borderlands, half swallowed by the stain. What a voice.
Very different. I know failure well. I glimpsed it lurking at the ragged edges of your mind. I watched its venom spread through the veins of the world. And I trembled at its terrible reverberations. The crossroads, where lost souls hope to find their way. Yeah, I've been really curious to see the animation in this one since they have shifted to sort of 3D. Style's translating pretty well, though. Devastating than the horrors of a hundred. I think this is gonna work a lot better with a mouse than with a gamepad. Hunted, harried, a fugitive seeking to outpace the past. Indiscriminate science stains the surgeon's hands. Like very simple models, but they're getting a whole lot out of, out of their texture work. It's working very well. Onward. And let us hope enough yet remains of the world. Steering the cart is very strange. <laughs> you see, even your valley is not immune to the spreading stain. Okay, let's see. Forward one, knock back. Defender. Holster. Say you. Cool. All right, a noxious blast for you. I like that they just instantly snap to kind of like the bam, the uh, attack screen. It's more efficient on the animation and it still has just a really nice punch that evokes how the uh, first game looked. Uh, dip, dip, dip. Poison darts? Let's say pistol shot. Yeah, I feel like they're making this animation, like, the animation is bringing a little bit more out of 3D than what the 2D could reasonably do. That's pretty cool. Oh, are y'all getting, uh, audio lag with the gameplay? I mean, you shouldn't be, but it's possible. It's always possible. Uh... Eh, let's defend, sure. Do I have to defend someone in particular? I guess I probably do, don't I? Uh, never mind. Uh. Eh, let's just crush. Don't chomp. Pick to the face. Seems synced to y'all. Okay, good. Good, good, good.
Yay! I feel like this is working pretty well. Like, are you shaking? Maybe not video worthy, there not not so mind blowing necessarily, but. Like effective enough though and, and like it's it's doing what the game needs during encounters like this one you must pick one of the choices by holding a on one of your heroes the results will be previewed at the bottom of the screen okay the stagecoach carries the flame which is the last hope for the world it'll gradually diminish as you drive but helpful hoping the local populace in assistance encounters can refill it the lower it gets the harder things will be for the party Okay. Let us unite them beneath our banner, or... Hmm. So this one increases... Right, hold on, I should look at this. Feels like I'm basically just choosing one of two kind of like reward outcomes on this one. Yeah, okay. in the air and seeing exclamation marks on everybody <laughs> one of the tricky things with diving into a whole bunch of games trying to oh equip trinket I see with diving into a whole bunch of games to uh examine animation is you have to just like learn a whole bunch of games really quickly and then move on <laughs> and learn a whole bunch of games. So ones that have like a lot of complexity to them. Can be a little overwhelming after a bit. But that's all right. Since I'm not playing too far into any of these, I don't have to do especially well. Cool looking enemy designs, too. Um, hitting you. Bravo. Yeah. Blinding gas, yes. Let's do that. Pistol shot. Very nice. Boy, that's a sturdy one. Yipes. Yeah, I'm not absorbing all this information game, sorry. <laughs> We're not going to be playing it that long.
Yeah. The idols are nice, I agree. Yeah, like this is this is another case kind of similar to Monkey Island where it's like, this is really effective. This is working very well for this game. Like, may not be stand out like stunning, incredible best of the year material, but really solid. Game looks good. That one's down. Now for big. Yipes. Get poisoned, nerd. hammering this thing. How are you so strong? Be dying, my guy. There we go. Oh, now we just broke an armor. There we go. That's more like it. Even the greatest of threats. Oh goodness, we got raided. I almost missed it. Surgeon friends, hello everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Playframe Plus. <laughs> I'm Dan. What were y'all doing over there? I'd say we're playing Darkest Dungeon 2, except we're not anymore. <laughs> we're about to switch, because we're just dipping into a whole bunch of games that came out this year, uh, examining the animation in them. Try to find some good stuff. And we found some good stuff. But welcome, everyone. I'm, I'm Dan. I should probably introduce myself. I'm Dan Floyd. I... Um, run YouTube channels like uh, Playframe and New Frame Plus. New Frame Plus is about video game animation. I'm a professional game animator. Uh, and yeah, so that's kind of what we're focusing on here today. Just dipping into a whole bunch of games that came out this year, trying to see if there's any uh, like uh, game animation treasures worth highlighting on the channel eventually. But let's see. We've got a next game to have a look at, so enjoy the tunes and the nice screen for a second. I'm still here, just queuing up the next game. Got a weird and specific question to eating me. Is the snare you and Carrie play when cutting out gameplay the same snare as in Lightbirds, not just another girl from Final Fantasy VII Remix? Yes. Well identified. That's exactly it. <laughs> it's just the opening few seconds of that, basically. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> a good ear and yeah i can definitely understand like if you were listening to that and you heard that sound at the start of the uh, track that would give you if you watched our channel often that would definitely give you 
major like what did i just hear what i thought i did because it's like gone almost as quickly as it like the rest of the uh instrumentation all comes in so quickly <laughs> impressive you're easily the first person who has identified that just by ear <laughs> Points for that. Almost got our next game queued up here. Just getting the graphic settings right. Not expecting this to be a Game Animation of the Year contender, but I do like me a good Disgaea. Where are your graphic settings, game? weird menu <laughs> give me a minute not a good menu <laughs> which is not entirely surprising and is fine <laughs> okay all right we're in Seems like it's a little quiet right now. Bump it up just a bit. Let's see how Disgaea is doing these days, huh? I don't have time to play Disgaea games anymore. <laughs> these games ask too much. Master of the Zangetsu Mukairyu school. You certainly have guts. I played the first few, like the first three or four. And enjoyed them, and I fell way in deep into final into Disgaea 2, because this is these are games that so, you can, they are mean, tactics games I'm like Final Fantasy Tactics or lots of other games of that sort that you, you can play forever if you want to very easily. <laughs> it's Fuji, but enough of the chit chat. Let's fight. Hmm. Very well. I'll count to three. As soon as I finish. We shall cross blades. <laughs> Fine by me. We should let our swords do the talking for us, like real Hinomoto warriors. I like your thinking. That's true, Bushido. All right, let's do it. One, two, you're open! What? But I'm not... I'm not done counting! Ah! <laughs> Check that one off. What? Why, you little... What about the Bushido Cove? Don't you have any pride as a warrior? <laughs> Idiot. What's a demon doing talking about Bushido? Come on. Winners are heroes, losers are zeros. Everyone in the netherworld knows that. You... I won't let you get out of here alive! Get him! Everyone, get him! Oh, so that's your idea of Bushido, huh? Ganging up on one guy? Uh, that is Matt Mercer, huh? I thought you were the master <laughs> of song gets who gives a shit. Silence! How dare you look down on a sword master of the Udo Shogunate! You'll get what's coming to you! Look down? <laughs> Man, that's not it at all. I sized you up as filthy rich, and I'm here to take everything you've got. 
It's my first battle in a while. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to go over the basics again. I think this Mercer guy's got a bright future. The battle has started. Give Fuji the wayward, wayward warrior commands. Battles are comprised of player turns where you direct your... I mean, turns, this is so many... Okay. <laughs> All right. It's this kind of game. You get it. Move. Let's move forth and attack. Also, in Disgaea, you can, like, lift and throw. That can have all kinds of fun little mechanical and strategic complexities. Let's not get into it right now. <laughs> Attack. I say. Oh, we've already got, like, our move set, so now we execute. And enter. Oh, is Disgaea switch when they switch, uh, Disgaea 6 when they switch to 3D models? I do kind of, I miss the sprites, even though, like, I can definitely see the, uh, logic in switching to, uh, 3D models. Given how much more you can do with them and how there's kind of an efficiency to it, in a way, where you can, like, you make one animation and boom, now you've got <laughs> the character facing all four directions. And you can have, like, nice kind of flowing, detailed, like, idols like this. Like, this, do this does look fine, but I kind of agree. Like, I like the sprite art that they did in the uh, earlier games as well. So it's a little sad seeing that gone. You, you still get fun little random art for stage clearing, though. And that I like. pupils all ran off. They must really love their master. So, what are you gonna do now? <laughs> Spare me! Spare my life! Pfft. Is it the way of Bushido found in death or something? Ugh, what a pathetic loser. <sighs> Whatever. Just hand your money over. I'll chop you down otherwise. Uh, Alright, but... but... This is all I have on me. Huh? That's all you've got after ripping off all your students? <sighs> Fine. You could just do my work for me instead. Th then you'll let me go? Have more recent yeah, Disgaea games been good? Because like uh, I said, I, I haven't, like, Get it? made time Get to play one since... I think 3 was the last one I actually, like, played all the way through. And I maybe dipped into 4, and I don't think I've touched any of them since. 5 and 7 are fantastic. Like, they're quite fun. If you like tactics RPGs like this, they... I, I can't think of a deeper tactics RPG than Disgaea. <laughs> and not, like, deep in terms of, like, massive complexity, just deep in terms of, like... Like, how deep do you want to go? The game will let you. <laughs> do you want to just... Do you want to level up a whole bunch of, like, units from a bunch of different uh, playable classes? Uh, get a whole custom team going? Level them up and learn all the moves, but mostly just focus on doing the main campaign? You can do that, that's fine. Do you want to really go in deep and, like, customizing your units and, like, leveling them up and then sort of, like, regenerating them as a better version of that same class and then level them up again so that they can, like, you can make an even more powerful version of that same unit. You can totally do that. Hey, do you want to dive into your weapon on one of their characters, inside of which is a between, like, 50 to 200 level stretch of, like, stretch of world, <laughs> a stretch of levels, like, potentially hundreds deep <laughs> to level that weapon up individually. <laughs> in bonkers, exciting new ways in which you will find all kinds of other cool stuff and level up your characters. And that's just for one weapon on one character. <laughs> like... Yeah, uh... <laughs> uh, Rager Anonymous just said it in chat, basically, like, you can level up to, like, somewhere like 50 or level 99 or whatever and be the campaign or whatever. The level cap, though, is 9,999. 
and there's stuff to do to get yourself there if you want to, and it's not just grinding the same level over and over. The, the game goes deep. There's endless game if you want it, which is cool. <laughs> I fell into that way hard on Disgaea 2 and had a great time the whole time. Now I have, like, a job and stuff. <laughs> but I'm sort of ignoring the most important thing, which is this Prinny with cat ears. As attentive as ever, Miss Perilica, your success with your apparel company is undoubtedly due to your gentle nature. Ah, Piton! I'm not that amazing. Anyway, it's time to make my rounds. Ah, that reminds me. Once you've finished your tasks, you may inquire at the general store. The it's really not the voice I is aboard for a business trip. expect sure from Prinnies. Would be much appreciated. I always love me a good Disgaea hub world. It's fun seeing, having not played any of the, uh, any of Disgaea 6, which is apparently when it went to 3D, it's fun seeing the old, like, monster and, uh, playable classes kind of, uh, in their 3D incarnations. You got the ninja, the thief. I really like Disgaea character designs. It is a very aggressive idle animation. Granted, I kind of suspect that having idle animations that are this, that have this much movement is probably really beneficial for tracking characters' position on screen, especially once you've, like, once you're zooming out and, like, there's a whole field of, like, 20 <laughs> characters to track on a map. Is it easy to jump into the latest Disgaea without knowing the plot of the previous games? Oh yeah, they're all they're all standalone. Like they've there's there's characters that may show up in any given one of them, but I started with two. I didn't even play the first one, like first. Uh you can dive into literally any one of them if you want to. I don't know. Is Does the Disgaea community, and it seems like we got one or two Disgaea fans in here at least, are there any agreed upon bests in the series? Like this is the best one? Usually most fan bases have like a, this is the one you should play if you only play one of them, right? We're not open yet, dude. The biggest Disgaea fan I know is saying that this one might end up being the best. Well, hey, good then. Great time to get on board. Just a sec. I don't think we're going to get further into this one, though. I, I don't think the animation is going to impress all that much. The animation has never really been the impressive aspect of Disgaea. Like, they've, they've always had sort of a charming retro aesthetic to them. They're fun, and they look perfectly fine. Uh, and they've got a lot of cuteness and charm to them. But yeah, I'm not expecting to be absolutely blown away by this one. <laughs> In terms of the animation, anyway. I'm thrilled to hear that Disgaea is not only, like, as good as ever, but potentially better than ever. That's awesome. But alright, I think it's time for a little Pikmin 4 before we wrap this up, because I need to look at that animation some more, and make decisions around it. BRB, hang on. I love that the <laughs> the quitting text for Disgaea is not just like quit or exit or anything like that. It is still just give up.
That's fun. Okay. Anyway, Pikmins. Just a minute. Hmm. Thanks for that stretch reminder. Vulture pony. Haven't done a bit. I don't know if we found any shoe ins for the uh like shoe ins for the video in terms of like finding new big like amazing animation candidates. Maybe one or two that deserve a mention at least. We found a few fun games though, some of which should probably get a one off <laughs> on Playframe. Or that I might just be playing some more of on my own time. I definitely need to get in at least a little bit more time on Mr. Son's hat box based on what I saw earlier. Boy, that was entertaining. Okay, okay. We're ready. Gunbrella was pretty fun too. It really did escalate very fast, that hat game. I wonder, like, we've been starting to hear rumors in various places about there being more new Nintendo hardware announced sometime soon. And who knows, like, I don't know if that's true, but there's been, like, a little bit of buzz around. I've been wondering if, like, I've had this little pet theory that, like, Nintendo was originally planning to do new hardware, like, a year or so ago, and then maybe just, like supply shortages due to like pandemic stuff and silicone being a little harder to get a hold of for a stretch made them delay like i felt like there were a handful of games that came that came out that seemed like they were expecting to be able to run on more powerful hardware <laughs> like bayonetta 3 and uh like uh there's been like several like several like first party ones even that seemed like like exclusives uh, pokemon yeah scarlet like scarlet and violet especially seemed like those were like games that may be expected to have more powerful hardware to work on granted the fact that they tried making a four player like a co-opable open world pokemon on the switch is like pretty bonkers <laughs> Maybe a mistake. <laughs> but, uh... Well, anyway. Uh, let's see. I'm sure I synchronized your clock, Dan, but something's off. I calculated the difference. It looks as if about one-sixth as much time passed on the surface as you spent underground. Time seems to move differently in the underground spaces on this planet. Boy. Not sure how it works, but I suppose that means you can take as much time as you need to explore caves. I was Nintendo demoing new hardware behind closed doors at a conference recently. Ooh, exciting. Hey, the onion sucked it up. 
The Switch can run Xenoblade games, that's true. Like, it all kind of comes down to the... It comes down to the team, the resources at your disposal, and the, like... And what you're willing to give up, basically. <laughs> to make something big run well on the Switch. Let's bring some Ice Pikmins. Oh, no, wait, we're already... We were full up before. Here we go. We're pretty far from the SS Beagle. And time is a passing. And raise it. Or talk. Huh, another circle of stones. We keep finding them in the most opportune locations. How interesting. Maybe Captain Olimar left them behind for us so we could track them down. Never mind that for now. I wonder if we're in this creature's territory. We should create a base here. Any Dantori master would tell you it's the most efficient way to move forward. But first, let's do something about that pesky creature already. I was gonna. You guys, wait your turn. Get him. Yay. New base unlocked. Press A to call the beagle to the base. Okay. Move base. Come here. So darn cute. All right, hold up. All right. Seems like lots of interesting chats happening. Can't do two things <laughs> at once. Uh, Pigment don't have much of a running animation, it seems. Like, yeah, no, like they're, which is just fine. They're in such a huge clump that I think it's good that they keep their motion very simple and not super attention grabby or just like you just have a big sea of noise behind you constantly if there was a ton of excess motion on them. Them all kind of moving as one big flurry unit is I think like a really good uh, good approach for them. An aspect of game dev I feel goes unseen is how mid-development games usually run a lot slower than after the final push to be able to run on consumer hardware. Now, that's definitely true. Every every game looks and runs pretty bad up until launch, and then sometimes a little while after. <laughs> a lot of work happens toward the end to get it all nailed down and try to just optimize everywhere you can. Yeah, like, Austin's getting at, like, getting at the truth of it here. It's difficult to speculate on the performance hit for uh, Scarlet and Violet without tearing the game apart in ways players generally aren't going to be able to. There, Lots of people will make lots of speculation about why a game is running badly and poorly, or why a game was made in that particular way. And we can, like, make some educated guesses, and we can dig into, like, kind of the first few top layers of the game tech-wise a little bit to try to make some guesses, but it's real darn hard to know. <laughs> well, so, so, Scott, Scott, three, right? I think this is a thing that's, like, actually, it definitely does seem like the entire Pokemon fan base is begging Nintendo and Game Freak to take more time. It definitely feels that way being on the internet because most anyone who's poking about talking about Pokemon is saying that. Uh, the problem is that's not the entire Pokemon fan base. That's a tiny, tiny fraction of the Pokemon fan base who talks about Pokemon games on the internet. Like, Scarlet and Violet are the most successful Pokemon game yet, right? I'm pretty sure. I think that's always, like, 
it always helps me to, like, a useful bit of perspective that I'm always trying to keep in mind is that, uh, despite complaints, uh, like, Sword and Shield sold more copies in, like, four months than Breath of the Wild sold in four years. And Scarlet and Violet are just did better than that. These games, like, a lot of people would like them to be better. I would as well. I don't think anyone's wrong for wanting them to be better. But, like, they're, they're doing really well. <laughs> the current strategy of not taking more time to release these games, of, like, releasing them at sort of, like, mid-level scope, relatively low budget. Well, well, not even that low budget, just not, like, not Red Dead budget. And releasing them often so that Pokemon remains in the conversation in the way that most games just can't because, like, even Tears of the Kingdom are not, like, it's still very good and people are actively playing it. It's not getting actively talked about nearly as much now as it would have been several months ago. Pokemon has a new game coming out. Not a new mainline game every year, but it's got new games coming out every year. And a new mainline one every two or three. Like, the strategy is really working for them. And maybe the, like, kind of bad word of mouth and press they're getting for just the performance on this one will make a difference. Maybe they'll change course a bit. But, like, the target audience for these games, which is kids, is still really loving them. <laughs> but all right, we were pick mining. The sound of Pikmin games is just so pleasant. Until everything's going badly and then every sound is <laughs> terrifying. You'll want to keep a close eye on the creatures, but if they move around a lot, they can easily escape your line of sight. When that happens, there's a handy trick for keeping your sights and aim where you want them. Press the right trigger to fix your auto target lock and keep your aim focused on the target. Oh, that's nice. Lock on. This guy's pretty big. Be careful. Raise it. You froze. Rose, don't just stand there. Now's your chance. I'm doing it. Oh gosh, it's motion controlling. Everyone drink up. Gotta remember my buttons. There we go. Anyone still need a drink? No, I guess everyone's already a flower. you guys can reach and do anything about that, can you? No? Probably need to be on the other side. Attack! What is this now? That seems dangerous. Weird surprise things. Get him. Grab something, Ochi. Or eat it. That counts.
Guess I should go see what all my little guys are up to. Are you guys going to fetch more? I'm going to assume yes. The onion produced different Pikmin. So onion color determines Pikmin type. Guess I should grab these two, huh? Even though it kind of looks like we're running out of day. Gather everything, team. Oh, look at that time. An important part of any rescue mission is making sure you're uh, making sure you make your way back to the base before it gets dark. Oh, hydrating. That's a good reminder. According to Captain Olimar's voyage log, Pikmin will be safe as long as they make it back to this area around the base. Seems the creatures get even more aggressive at night. If any Pikmin are separated from the squad, you better collect them now. Yeah, I guess I better. I don't think we have any stray Pikmin. Better make sure, though. Nope. Everyone's here. All right. Do I need to, re like, manually return them? I guess I probably don't, right? You know, honestly, <laughs> I feel like if I'm going to actually play more Pikmin, I need to start from the beginning again, because, like, I've got, I waited a couple of months, and now I've forgotten all the buttons <laughs> and how to play. And y'all are having interesting conversations in chat, so hold up. Let's, here, we'll just hang for a little bit. Hangouts and beats and whatnot before calling it a night. Sorry for not more Pikmin for tonight. <laughs> I'm just feeling my brain starting to check out after learning a bunch of mechanics really quickly in other games. <laughs> and then dropping out of them. And then trying to also follow a conversation while tired. <laughs> so what else is going on over here? Did a Rebirth demo come out? Is it like today or something? Or is it like a more gameplay videos? I, f I feel like I've been seeing more people talking about it in the last couple of days. No? Oh, it was at the Tokyo Game Show. Okay, cool. All right, that, that explains it. So some more stuff has started to come out. Nice. I probably won't even bother watching it. I know. I already know I'm like playing that one. Like, on the channel, even. <laughs> the Baja Bali had a question earlier on. Hang on. Would Square Enix be an example of a company that tries to have a triple A game every few years with some small ones in between? Uh, like, Final Fantasy VII Remake in 2020. Final Fantasy VII FS in 2021, which I can't remember what FS stands for. Crisis Core in 2022. Uh... Final Fantasy 16 and uh, Ever Crisis in 2023, Rebirth next year. Yeah, they're doing a lot of seven, huh? Um, like Square's a pretty large size publisher. Like they are, they are not just they, like they are a triple A developer. They have several triple A developers all inside their like one studio house, 
but they are also like a publisher who like publish games from other devs as well. So they're releasing stuff pretty constantly regardless. They're very big. And I expect like the frequent release of various Final Fantasy things is in part sure like uh, is meant to like keep the brand alive and flourishing and all that but a lot of them just really perform very well but a big part of their like strategy in terms of the games they make has often been like eye candy a lot of their big tentpole like main releases for as long as final fantasy has been around they tend to be pretty great looking like eye candy games more recently they'll have like smaller spin-off stuff and uh all kinds of other things but if you're if they're releasing a new final fantasy or like a brand new mainline kingdom hearts or whatever else those are meant to look very triple a and good that's something they like looking very pretty is something that they Man, due to sell, they managed to sell a lot of units that way. And it's worked fairly well for them. Like, it does mean that every failure is much more costly, though, because they invested way more in it, right? Like, uh, yeah, like Rager mentioned Forspoken, that was one that definitely wasn't cheap. That's basically what the a lot of the previous Final Fantasy XV team worked on. That probably cost a lot. Wasn't especially good. Probably didn't. Definitely didn't perform as well as they'd have liked. Probably didn't perform very well at all. Like, those big games, if they flop, they flop hard. They cost, the, like, they cost a bunch. I just looked over to thinking like, oh, I should switch to just chatting mode as our <laughs> for this stream. And Ashton was already way ahead of me. Thanks, Ashton. <laughs> but yeah, that that's good point, Buffy. Like Square is also releasing a lot of smaller things like uh, Triangle Strategy and Octopath Traveler. Uh, well, they're not like tiny games, but they're like definitely way smaller than a big mainline Final Fantasy. And they publish lots of other stuff too. What was that sort of like fantasy farming game they released earlier this year? Or maybe that was last year. And for a while, they were the publisher on, like, the Hitman games and, uh... Ugh. Harvestella, that's it. Thank you, thank you. That's the, uh, farming game I was thinking of. Deus Ex as well, right? Yeah. Some IDOS games, basically. Yeah. Now, Square's big. It's also just useful to remember, like, we have a we have a tendency to kind of personify most large companies to some degree or other, uh, based on the things they release, or maybe some larger personalities within them, or uh, maybe the way, like, some of the like public statements that the company has, or their branding, or whatever else. But it is good to always be able to keep in mind like every single one of these big companies is like they're, every single one of them is deploying some level of cynical business strategy to make money I know we're like some of them some of them seem more obviously like kind of the villain bad guys for all of them but that like it's literally all of them are that way though <laughs> like that is even the ones that are putting on a nicer face on it, that are being more like, that seem more like they are sort of like the friendly, hey, like 
fans love us. We like, <laughs> like we love our fans, that sort of thing. That is just, that is the strat, that is the cynical strategy they are employing. Whereas other companies are employing different cynical strategies. Like it's, it is important to remember that. <laughs> It's easy to kind of like get reductive and simplify a lot of these, like to sort of have our favorites and cho be choosing like kind of good and bad guys here. See, Larian is less money bent. Well, no, that's not even true. So Larian is an interesting case. Larian is not is uh, not publicly traded. It is independent. It is like they <laughs> they don't have investors. And that makes an enormous difference. <laughs> and it's hard to be a company that big that is not, like, that is privately owned. Thank you. My boy, my brain is really going up. <laughs> I'm tired. But, uh, yeah, like, Larian is privately owned. And, like, that, it makes an enormous difference. But, boy, that's hard to maintain at large scale as a big company having to, constantly have the kind of like income the money coming in to keep paying that many people you gotta be like <laughs> you gotta have some hits and they gotta be reliable and if they aren't hits things could go bad this is kind of what I was like sort of saying though like uh, like a rager you're saying like it's yeah, they are all comp like companies aiming to make money. They're all businesses, but it's nice seeing where some of the bigger companies are willing to actually make games for the fans rather than for the pocketbooks. That's the sort of thing that I, I kind of want to push back on. They're all making games for the pocketbooks. Some of them may seem more like they are making it more for the fans and that like tons of the individuals within the companies absolutely are. Like in every single one of these companies, even the ones that you, like we generally vilify, the ones that you hate, they all... Like, they're packed with people who care a lot about what they're making and want to make the coolest thing possible. But as a larger entity, as, like, they're all, they all have business people making business decisions at the top. And making money is their goal. And, it, like, and I'm more, mostly referring to kind of, like, the bigger companies here. It, that can be true of smaller companies as well. Like as soon as you get down toward like indie sized companies, then in that case, especially since most of them are going to be cell phone like uh, businesses as well, a lot of them are in the business because they love games and they love making games. They probably wouldn't be in games if they didn't because like games are a really risky venture to get into. It's hard to stay in business making video games, which as we're seeing a lot this year, Yeah, the main, and the main reason I push back on uh, sort of the framing of some bigger companies being more, like, cool and doing stuff for the fans and, like, caring about the games they make more than other ones and stuff like that is that it, at their core, profit is what drives all these companies. Uh, if they see their profit threatened or if they see a route toward increasing profits that moves against that ethos that seems to be more like fan friendly or whatever they will do it like profit is the goal it's the larger motive and it's it's easy to get kind of blindsided by a company doing something that is more profit driven or hostile or even like evil <laughs> just because we've personified them as one of the good ones so like it's just a thing that i think if you like uh it, it can be easy to ignore a lot of what a like ignore a lot of bad that a company might do because we have collectively labeled them as the quote-unquote good guys in game the game dev industry and similarly i think sometimes we can be a little no very over hasty to paint a lot of people in the industry as bad guys for not for fairly reductive reasons <laughs> yeah
I think it's been on my mind more lately, actually, I think just because of uh, I think somebody else's video I watched. Mm, uh, shoot, I need to find the actual channel name because their stuff's great. Did um, Some of you actually may know off the top of your head. Uh, this guy made that video that was kind of getting uh, shared around over the last couple of months about uh, kind of diving into why you are so frequently fighting and killing gods in Japanese uh, RPGs, especially, but in a lot of just Japanese stories and media. What's that? Cha what's that channel name? I know some of y'all know what video I'm talking about. It's like Moon something. I've been watching more of their videos. Their videos are great. Moon channel. Oh, it says Moon channel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah, watch more of their stuff. Their stuff is great. They have a, uh, there's a particular video that I was watching um, of theirs. I highly recommend all of them, but uh, yeah, the, one of their other ones, uh, which is called, uh, why isn't Sega overprotective of its intellectual property? Cause like we've got this, it was quite eye-opening. So there's a link to that particular video, the one I'm talking about. Um, and this, uh, like, Moon Channel clearly has some background in law, enough to be able to speak with some level of understanding and familiarity. And, uh, like, we kind of have this common sort of, like, fan-level uh, perception of Nintendo being extremely precious with and protective, overprotective even, of their intellectual property and like shutting down fan projects and to, like just do like being really aggressive with that kind of stuff in a way that we all kind of see and have sort of like uh, identified. Whereas we have sort of a perception that Sega is much less so. And uh, this video, he basically kind of like lays out that no, it's absolutely not the case that Sega is less so. And in the ways that they are, it is strategic. Like there's, there's a, there's a lot of, <laughs> like, I didn't even know, or I'd forgotten that I didn't really, I'd forgotten that Atlas is owned by, is a subsidiary of Sega, that Persona games are Sega games. I either never knew that or completely forgot. <laughs> and Atlas is very protective of their IP <laughs> and Atlas is Sega. <laughs> and Sega is Sammy, which is a, like, uh. God, what is it? A yeah, pachinko company. And Sega, in a way, Sega is the friendly, fan-friendly public face of a pachinko company. It's all cynical business. <laughs> anyway, it was really, like, it was really enlightening. Like, I actually, like, uh, learned quite a few neat things from that video. And so, highly recommend I'm not meaning to just like be here vilifying it, like all of these like companies or the people at them either. It's it's complicated and it's capitalism. <laughs> so a lot of evil goes on here in general, but a lot of like good and passionate creative people also work in a lot of these places. And make a lot of the th and the things that we love come from the creative uh, people working in these places. A lot of those people often get kind of uh, taken advantage of in many of these places, which sucks. That's not unique to games either, but boy, it, it does happen. <laughs> but I don't know. Those, those people and their creative, creative work and their uh, love for what they do also deserve celebrating at the same time as the criticism for business stuff. It's leveled out. My, my sentences are completely falling apart now. I should start going to bed. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me for rambles. But before that, for uh, diving into like a half dozen video games and seeing uh, some actually pretty good animation here. I could I would not be surprised if a couple of those games at least made a small appearance. Maybe not like a center stage appearance in that video. Well, we've, I think some of these definitely deserve a passing mention, at least. It's funny that that video doesn't isn't like packed with 
big hit entries yet. I feel like the list of games that I'm wanting to highlight so far that I've found is it's shorter than past years. But the ones that are on there are, boy, they're good. <laughs> There's some really good and cool game animation this year. Before I sign off, though, we should roll credits and I should thank folks, especially given that I've not been paying as nearly as close attention to like... <laughs> the folks who've been resubscribing and subscribing and whatnot. Gotta do some thanks. For all the people who have resubscribed, which includes this list of people, <laughs> uh, like Art of Matthew and Star Tracings and Rat Astronomer, King of Doma, Moon Decay, Drink Jabber, Rager Anonymous, Iskarja Rock, Zorlock Dark Soul, the other KT, visiting from the VODs. Yeah, and I didn't see you gifted a sub to, to Will. <laughs> That's kind of you. Ashton, also, thank you. But also Bacon Avenger, and Wolu, and Ludo History. And Kevlar19, and Shutara19. The entire 19 family is here. Zephleos, Slacker Alex, Raven Daydreaming, Rebels Without Applause. Goodness, a lot of you subscribed while I was looking at game animation. Baha Bali, Nismuth. Chris 2C2 and X2. Thank you all very much for supporting the channel. You're too kind. And I have a good time streaming for you folks. So thanks for coming and hanging out. And thanks to both Will and Serge for the raids. And to anybody who came in from those raids, if you're still hanging around, thanks for joining and hanging out. Sorry for the weird tired energy. It's not usually this tired. <laughs> I had fun, though. And I found a fun new weird hat game. <laughs> I'm streaming right now. Ah! A Dan. Yeah. Perfect. Doing something called Voices of the Void, and he's been doing that He's been streaming for a while today. And I don't know what Voices of the Void is. Let's all go find out. We're gonna raid Dan. So thank you all again for hanging out. Let's all go say hi. <laughs>